How's it going everyone? Today I want to go through what actually determines your looks. So to put it simply, it's the expression of different genes, also known as epigenetics. But there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of like religious beliefs around genetics and how you look, your development and so on, genetic determinism. People think that there's just some random genetic lottery which is floating out there, some spirituality type thing, um, which determines your looks. And it's just so weird. Like I even see, vid see videos um, of people making theories like, oh yeah, only ugly people, only ugly parents uh, create beautiful children and whatnot. Or like, um, you know, hot mom, ugly dad creates beautiful kids the other way around. It's not like this just delusional genetic lottery kind of way of thinking. Like it's all just luck. Like it's all just floating out there. But in reality, uh, these genes affect how your bones develop. And the expression of these genes is affected by your environment, um, by the nourishment that you take in, and by the nutrients that you consume. So yeah, so your maxilla, also known as your mid face bone, uh, your upper jaw, right? Your maxilla, which affects um, right your mid face projection, how far your face goes forward, uh, the width of your face, your zygomatic width, right? Um, your zygomatic height, um, your under eye support, like your eye region, so many different things, your dental arch, your palatal um, width, right? These, this bone is gonna be affected by the expression of the RUNX2 gene, which um, is responsible for forming osteoblasts. We've got the FGFR2 gene, the EDAR gene, and the PAX9 or PAX1 gene. This is what's gonna mainly affect the development of the maxilla. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but you can see basically every bone is affected by the RUNX2 gene for the most, the EDAR gene. And um, yeah, there are some differences like the palate is affected a bit more by the PAX9 and 1 gene. Um, and the nasal bones, and the, the collagen, like there's more to it than bones, but um, like the nasal, the uh, cartilage development is affected by these collagen genes, um, which also affects the, the maxillary, no, the um, craniofacial sutures. So when these genes are expressed appropriately, what we're gonna see is a lot of forward development, a lot of facial depth, a lot of mid face projection. We're gonna see a wide dental arch um, right, straight teeth, no, no crooked teeth or anything, right? We're gonna have um, a broad and tall skull and also on top of that, an inflated skull. So um, your cranial inflation is gonna be bigger, which means, take example, Chico Lachowski, right? It doesn't look like he has a lot of bone mass, even though his skull is big and that's cranial inflation, right? So the inside of your skull is gonna be inflated. Um, that's also what we're gonna see with proper epigenetic expression. We're gonna see wider gonions, right? Flared gonions on a man, obviously. Um, a long ramus, well-developed ramus, a projected chin, a well-developed frontal bone, which is the brow ridge and it's gonna be low set, right? We're gonna have a well-developed brow ridge and it's gonna be low set. When you're not gonna have the proper expression, when you're gonna have these genes being suppressed, what we're gonna to start to see is downward growth of the face right, where the maxilla is growing down rather than forward. So also called like clockwise rotation of the face. So we're gonna see dorsal humps start to form, right? Because as the maxilla, from the right side of the face, as the maxilla turns clockwise, this hump is gonna form because the nasal bones are connected to the maxilla. Um, we're gonna see recession of the jaw. We're gonna see narrow palates. Um, round orbital bones, short ramus, um, a very high gonio angle, which signals down growth. So basically it's just, it's, you're gonna have a narrow face as well, a very narrow maxilla. Um, so basically it's just the narrowing, the downward growth of the face, right? The degeneration of the face is what's gonna happen. And this is very common nowadays. And Weston A. Price actually proved how 
food and environment affects this because in 1930s he traveled to every continent examining the facial structure the dental of a bunch of tribes and he saw that after they transitioned to the modern diet from eating naturally their faces became narrower the dental arches became narrower their teeth were crooked um their faces were downward grown but before that they had really good craniofacial structure really good dental arches no crooked teeth without any orthodontics whatsoever um which is just proof that of the degeneration of humans right so the main gene that controls most of the bone formation is the run x2 gene and the nutrients that affect the run x2 gene the expression of it is going to be 25 hydroxy calcalciferol otherwise known as the active form of vitamin d3 uh, we've got menequinone 4 also known as mk4 the version of vitamin k2 and also cobalamin which is vitamin b12 so vitamin d is going to bind to the vitamin D receptor, which will bind to the RUNX2 promoter. And this is gonna um, increase the transcription of the gene and allow osteoblast differentiation to happen and um, intramembranous formation of the bones. B12 is going to regulate a methyl donor to stop RUNX2 from being overly methylated. And what this means is when a methyl group is added to DNA added to a certain gene, this gene is not going to be expressed. So it's going to prevent the overmethylation of this RUNX2 gene and it's going to be expressed far more. And menequinone K2 is needed to drive osteocalcin, which is a protein need for the mineralization of bone. It's going to drive that into the bone and allow the bone formation to happen. So these two, I should have written it in a different order, but D3 and B12 are what's needed to activate the gene, along with other nutrients, of course, but mainly those. And this is what um, carries out the effects of the gene, the bone formation. So if you're deficient in any of these nutrients, and by definition, deficient means below the optimal amount, and the optimal amount would be what we're adapted to eating, which is animals, just animals, raw animals, right? Um, so anything below that is going to cause overmethylation and you're going to end up with um, a narrow midface, poor midface projection, a narrow palate, a uh, small airway, a weak jaw, and so on. So that was just an example of which nutrients affect a single gene, the RUNX2 gene. But now I'm going to talk about how vitamin A or retinol actually affects the expression of certain genes too. So the active form of vitamin A is known as retinol or retinoic acid. So retinoic acid is going to bind with the um, with the retinoic acid receptor and then this is going to form the RARRXR complex. So this complex will attach to RARES or retinoic acid receptor elements on gene promoters um, in genes such as FGFR2 or 3, um, the SOX9 gene, and the collagen gene, COL2A1. Right, so retinoic acid is going to directly affect the expression of these genes. And vitamin D does the same thing with RXR, um, but binds to vitamin D receptor elements on different genes. So yeah, that's just another example of how nutrients affect the gene expression. And if you have anything which qualifies a deficiency, which is just below the optimal amount, um, you're gonna have a lack of expression of these genes, which is gonna result in a uh, worse development. And the reason why people are suffering from this so severely compared to even like 50 years ago is because raw dairy is illegal in most places, right? In most Western countries, um, red meat overconsumption is fear mongered uh, with the heart disease correlations and so on. And then we've also got, because of that, everyone's eating lean meat. So they have a deficiency in nutrients like vitamin A, uh, K2 and D, which are like the most important 
for um, these gene expressions. And everyone's overcooking their meat because of bacteria fear and they're destroying the B12 by like 30% or something. So it's just insane nowadays. Um, yeah, just everyone's deficient in vitamin A, D, K2 and all other nutrients as well. But specifically those, basically people only get K2 and A from like milk and cheese, pasteurized milk and cheese. That's basically most people's only source of it because their meat that they eat is lean as hell. Like over the last 10 years, I've seen ground meat in the store go from like, go from like 25, 20% fat. Now everything's like 10% or 5% even fat in butchers as well. Like it's insane, this obsession with lean meats and butchers are just cutting all the fat off, leaving this like tiny little piece of fat on the end. And it's all just lean meats, lean meats because it's just the, f the fitness trends, talking about lean meats, like all these bodybuilders on steroids who don't eat fat to produce their hormones, right? And then you've got the, the heart disease, fear mongering because of saturated fat and all this bullshit. So it's just insane. Um, yeah, a, an actual controlled study which demonstrates this is the pot and just cat study. So these cats were fed either raw meat or cooked meat. Um, there were multiple groups which differed in the, the ratios, but um, the cooked meat cats just degenerated like we are now. Um, their bone structures degenerated, their, their skulls got smaller, um, their zygomatic arches weren't complete anymore. And yeah, it's just insane. Like the same thing's happening with humans and nobody's realizing it. But yeah, um, if you'd like to join my private community, I have a link to that in my description. And also there's a link to private coaching and application for that um, in the same link. So yeah, if you wanna check that out, go ahead. Um, but if you like the video, like and subscribe. Um, let me know some more ideas that you want me to make YouTube videos on. Um, yeah, thanks for watching guys.